Hey guys, what's up? Chris here with Cohesive Friendship Unit. Just me today. It's time to talk Death Stranding again, guys. It's time. This is actually going to be part one of part or two parts where we go through uh, Sam Porter Bridge's necklace and go through all kind of six equations that are on that necklace. And this is going to be covering the first three of those equations. Uh, but real quick, we are doing a giveaway, guys, at 700 subs. Like right now, when I'm recording this, we're at 699, so I have no idea what's going to be happening. But at 700, we're giving away a copy of Ukulele. If you're watching this and we've already hit 700 subs, uh, check out our channel homepage. There will be an announcement for our next giveaway, probably within like 48 hours of hitting 700 subs. So just keep that in mind. Usually all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel, and we would appreciate your support. Uh, there is a physics video that I made uh, maybe a month or so ago that will be somehow addressed. It'll probably be in a card right now. And I'm going to be referencing it twice in this particular video, but I'll, I'll be like actually providing clips. So I don't, if you haven't seen it yet, I don't think it's super necessary to watch it, but some of the ideas do tie in together. So we have Sam's necklace with all six equations. Some of them aren't even entirely equations, uh, but we are going to go through, again, the first three uh, with this picture from left to right. Uh, and those are uh, the Einstein field equations. Those are the reaction diffusion equation. And the third one is basically uh, a representation of a scalar field with like symmetries. And yeah, we're just going to walk through kind of what they mean. And I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not going to be so, you know, a very high level stuff. Like you're not going to not going to need to like be doing any math here. Not going to be deriving anything. Uh, but we're going to be talking about what the equations essentially mean, how they kind of apply in the real world, how I think they could apply in Death Stranding. And if there's like a fun fact or something, I'll, I'll throw that in. But let's start off with the Einstein field equation. And actually the field equation is a set of 10 equations uh, in Einstein's general theory of relativity that uh, describe the fundamental interaction of gravity uh, as a result of space-time being curved by mass energy. And it's, it's basically one equation again, that's the summation of 10 equations. And it is the central equation for general relativity. And like all equations, it kind of has two sides, right? Uh, and one side has the Einstein tensor, which uh, basically describes uh, the geometry slash curvature of space-time. It describes how uh, space-time moves. And the other side describes all of the stuff inside space-time. And the two combined essentially relates the geometry of space-time to the stuff inside space-time. More specifically, how the stuff in space-time wraps space-time around it. And uh, this can actually be used in Death Stranding as a way to maybe even describe the, the time falls. So the time falls in Death Stranding, the rain that causes accelerated aging, I kind of theorized that it could be due to maybe time dilation, and I'll include a little snippet of the physics video right now. It could be some kind of time dilation occurring with these time falls, and there clearly is. Uh, when when the raindrop hits Sam's hand, you see him. You see that spot of his hand age a little bit, but what's interesting is it's so localized to actual rainfall, which is why it might just be some Kojima magic, but it seems to be like the actual rain that's causing this. So the rain may have some crazy velocity based effects. Uh, rain might somehow drastically slow the velocity that it touches. And this would leave things that rain, the rain touches moving incredibly 
slow compared to everything around it, and thus time moving faster relatively, and you aging. And ultimately, all of this pelting rain, if it does affect everything in the world, would eventually accelerate, you know, like erosion and earth patterns and stuff, and just rock uh, change over time. And that could cause the crater, or it could just be all the conflicting energies causing an explosion uh, just from all the connection of the two worlds. Or again, it could just be Kojima supernatural stuff, or some combination of the two. So again, I think this could be uh, this could be the equation that essentially you know explains relativity. It explains how uh, these time falls are working. But uh, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool equation. There's uh, definitely some cool like examples. Uh, it's used in like looking at like a black hole and how like the black hole warps space time around it. That's like a pretty big popular way. The opening sequence of a 2003 French film. Uh, Le Triplets de Belleville or whatever. I don't know. It's called the Triplets of Belleville. Phil features this uh, Einstein field equation. That's that's kind of my fun fact about it. But mo let's move on to the second equation, the reaction diffusion equation. And uh, this actually describes a distribution given a reaction. I'm sure a lot of you are kind of familiar with what diffusion is, like diffusion osmosis you learn about it in like high school just how uh, things like to essentially they things will move to balance themselves out uh, like osmosis is like water moving to uh, reach equilibrium between two sides of a cell stuff like that and this equation actually has a reaction term and a diffusion term and you can it's not like strictly designed for chemicals, but it can be used in chemical reactions. It can also be used in things like predator-prey, uh, symbiosis, and much more. It's basically you can take any number of things, usually two is the easiest, you can have them interact with one another, and this will describe the diffusion given that reaction. Uh, there's actually a lot of cool simulations. If you just look up like reaction diffusion simulations, you'll see all kinds of like kind of cool trippy things they can just look at forever <laughs> simulations uh, but they these equations actually uh, are used in describing Turing patterns in Turing patterns Alan Turing uh, computer scientist in the early 20th century uh, describes the way in which patterns in nature such as stripes and spots how those can arise naturally out of uh, like a homogeneous uniform state. So it kind of explains how we can see stripes and spots in nature and how those stripes and spots uh, exist the way that they do, how they are imperfect, if you will. And this could be used in Death Stranding in a few ways. It's kind of interesting because it's such a general equation. It's, it's interesting to think of like many applications. Uh, it can be used for maybe there's like a weather, a weather pattern and the tracking of time falls, uh, the BTs, the beach things. It could be used because they seem to have some weird pattern like stuff going on. Uh, the actual act of a death stranding, which is uh, a bunch of animals essentially dying and being like stranded on the beach and dying could somehow be used to describe that uh, and also the world of Death Stranding seems interesting uh, it doesn't seem normal it seems like there's uh, some the basically all of the like natural environments we've seen have been very sparse and very strange and it, it just could be a model of the interaction of uh, Hades with our world and the diffusal pattern among that I don't, it's gonna it's such a broad equation that it's gonna be very hard to describe but that's the reaction diffusion equation and the last equation is not really an equation I mean it is but the the way it, it's not like a proper scientific thing uh, it's basically a representation of a scalar field and specifically like symmetry so uh, a scalar field shows 
uh, magnitude of quantity is relative to space, which is a super vague term, I know, like very, very abstract. But uh, looking at like a heat map is a good example. You look at the heat map and if you pick a point on the heat map that's hot, you can see the magnitude of a quantity, which in this case is heat, given a relative space. So if you're looking at a heat map, like a picture of something, right? So that's the space is the picture. And then you can see the, the quantity of heat that's being measured, right? Which is the red. So you can pick that and you can measure the quantity of it. You pick a cold spot and you can see the quantity of heat again, but this time it's lower given space, which is neat. Another kind of good example would be like a topographic map. Uh, so if you just had a bunch of random numbers, some like on, on a 2D plane, right? Some of them would be lower than others, some of them will be higher, and that would be your quantity that you could point to. And then if you were to actually make some a, a topography out of it, if you were to connect the points, uh, you could actually model that in 3D space, which like, yeah, when you look at a map, you see points like this elevation is, you know, 3000 feet, this elevation is sea level. Uh, and when you actually take all of the points into consideration, you get a topography. So you're um, measuring like the, the quantity of, in this case, uh, altitude, well, not altitude, but uh, height above sea level, elevation, and you are able to uh, in process that in, in space, be it two-dimensional on a map or three-dimensional, if you were to actually make it three-dimensional. That's what a scalar field is. Uh, and you can actually describe Higgs fields in this way. Uh, and this is like the second instance where I'm actually gonna play something from my physics video. And I'm going to describe like Higgs boson, Higgs fields, and how I think those could play a role in Death Stranding. Uh, so yeah, here's that clip from that physics video. There's also something called the Higgs field, uh, which is an energy field that uses fundamental particles called Higgs boson particles. And what this Higgs field does is particles that interact with Higgs field are given mass via these Higgs boson particles. So the reason that this has to happen is because uh, adding mass slows velocity, which prevents particles from traveling at the speed of light. So these Higgs boson particles are going to be interacting with the Higgs field, and that's going to prevent them from hitting the speed of light, which is physically impossible, and this is one of the reasons why it's physically impossible. Uh, this could be kind of a an, an electron being like our world and an antipositron being Hades, where you can observe either one of them. The two existing create our universe as a whole, but there are two separate worlds, if you will, and the bridge babies allow you to traverse between the two. How do they do that? Uh, perhaps they do some sort of Higgs field manipulation. And then there's Higgs himself, who seems to have a strong connection with the bridge babies. You see him in the last trailer, uh, opening and closing with bridge babies. Uh, and he seems to have a, a very strong connection with the world in Hades. And he actually might exist in two states himself. Uh, I might be reading into this too much, but Higgs has two G's, Cliff has two F's. They both seem to be relatively antagonists. Uh, and then there's the scene in the end of the last trailer where Higgs is uh, shown on the screen, but Cliff is actually the one talking. Oh, it's so hard to form connections when you can't shake hands. Fortunately, I've got a good connection to the other side. And what this could possibly mean is very Kojima-like fashion, Higgs can actually exist in two states. He can exist as Higgs or Cliff, depending on where, how he's observed or what, you know, what part of the world he's in, then our world or the Hades world. And the BTs, the beach things, are clearly uh, in some way uh, creatures of the Hades world or the if you want to call it the anti-positron world, whatever. But that's that's kind of uh, the exploration of Higgs and what it is. 
And that's all for part one of this video, guys. Uh, part two should be coming in any time between one and two weeks. Uh, so yeah, if you want to see that, definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, let me know. And I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you guys next time.